Brooklyn Independent Television. Hey you guys, welcome back to another episode of BK for Real. I'm Wilbinson. I'm Monica. What a better way to celebrate the fall than go to school. Tonight we are at LIU Brooklyn. We're about to take a tour of the school, but first, check out this scary film yeah. shot in a high school. From Piper Theater Summit Film Program. It's called Down the Rabbit Hole. Check it out.
We're in the Selena Gallery checking out the exhibition by Turkish artist Aileen Tekina. They have three gallery spaces on campus. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, this piece is my favorite. In our next film, another one by Piper, Aaron Champagne tells the story of a would-be soldier facing a tough decision in honorable choosing. Enjoy. Enjoy. Tens of thousands of our troops poured across the Iraqi border to liberate the Iraqi people. It's up to us in our time to choose and choose wisely between the hard but necessary task of preserving peace and freedom and the temptation to ignore. library be very quiet from real works director Dominique Hicks and wonders why do guys sag their pants do you have any ideas well who knows along with her production team Hickson interviews students community leaders and even fashion experts to get a range of humorous responses to this trend very disgusting. They don't have no respect for themselves or the women or no one else. So why you want to walk around with your drawers showing and thinking you gangsta at the same time? Big mobs. I don't <clears throat> want to view other people's um, posteriors. At the end of the day, when you get married, you're not sagging your damn pants on the altar.
are my opinions about saggy pants? I think that uh, fits certain people and it doesn't fit other people. Uh, me, myself, no. I don't, I don't like it. But when people wear pants like that, they're supposed to have some bad looking drawers on. I feel that saggy pants are um, a fashion statement. Um, I feel uh, sometimes it's appropriate, sometimes it's not. I don't think you can make a gross generalization that uh, every person is not going to like something. Because right when you say that, there'll be somebody who says, I love it. Well, I love it because um, I like when people wear things that aren't traditional. And, you know, I'm definitely against the McDonaldization of the world. I, I, I don't want to see, uh, you know, homogeneity. I don't want to see everything in the world to be the same. Um, I like to see different things. And when I see people wearing saggy pants, it usually makes me laugh. A, a dude might say because he don't give a because he wants somebody to say, why your pants sag? I like what pants sag because you know he ain't got the joint on it. I think one of the reasons that it's persevered so long is probably probably because of its relationship to hip hop culture. Oh, they see Lil Wayne on TV? Uh, I put it in my pocket and sad. Basically, like my belt may be too big. If I got some light in my pants, that's that spark. I dress up. You know what I'm saying? Fashion. This time you gotta be presentable. This time you do what you do. It's a weekend, partying. Like, I wouldn't go to a business meeting, I wouldn't go for a job and have my pants sagging. It's, so, just, it's just a comfortable feeling. Like, it's like, you're saggy jeans and you feel you already know. know. It's a swaggy world. That's you already know. know. That's, That's what we do. Put your pants all the way up. It's like, you don't feel the same when you're walking. I don't think anybody wears their pants too high. It's funny. Like, when it comes out with a personal style, a lot of skaters, I mean, it's just their, their style. Like, all baggy clothes or just total skinny jeans. And, I don't know, I just don't want a belt. There's a history behind sagging that I don't think people, a lot of people who do sag know exists. I don't know. I never, I mean, I've been to jail, you know, but I never looked, you know what I'm saying? That's just something I, don't, I can't understand. I don't, I can't explain that. Early 90s, early 90s. I've heard it come from Michael Jordan when he wore his lucky shorts under his, uh, just team shorts. Dudes that would have saggy pants so that they could go into stores and steal stuff. 40s down on them, they'd take candy in there, they'd just take anything they could grab in their saggy pants. Most people speculate that the history of sagging started um, in the the prison system in the sense that when, when you go to jail, which we hope that none of you ever experience, um, you you're asked to take off your belt and your shoestrings uh, for various reasons. Um, whether or not, you know, for the reasons like you may harm yourself or harm others or whatever. So um, they take those things away from you and if your pants are oversized, they naturally just fall down. So this was a style that started there, most people think, and um, eventually translated into street style. I'd like you to ask the ladies, do any girls find this attractive? I don't get it. Yeah, women do. Women like it. Because you know why it's disobedient. Women love that dog Women crave that It depends on who it is. <laughs> it depends on the person. I don't necessarily like it. I just think that like, like if a boy acts like a thug and he's signing his pants, why are you doing that? Pull your pants up. I'm not a huge fan of it. I think I kind of like more, um, put together more of flattering pants. I don't think they really flatter the guys. It looks kind of weird when they're like wobbling and stuff like that and trying to pull the pants up. It just looks kind of awkward. Who in the world want a man with baggy pants with their pants hanging down and their drawers showing? That don't show me of no such enthusiasm or the like. What you look like in November and uh, April wearing Christmas drawers? To each his own. You want to wear your pants down low? What up? Making any laws to stop people from doing anything creatively or self-expression is, I mean, that's called censorship, you know? It's personal expression, you know? Unless you're really offending someone with it, I don't see why people shouldn't be allowed to express themselves how they want. I really, people get offended. You could have, I mean, like, I could be offended by the little thing. I see her legs right here. I'm offended. Does that mean she can't show her legs? No. I think if, if they like to size their pants, it's fine. Everyone has their own style, so why not? You come to a point where you appreciate people's style for 
their individual expression. It doesn't mean that you do it yourself or that you like it or dislike it, but you, you tolerate it because it's it makes them feel comfortable in their own skin. You gotta be yourself, always be yourself. No matter what people tell you, always be yourself. So for 2011, it's the motto, be yourself. Be yourself, you don't get lost. Keep it young, wild, and free. That's what we do. This New York, baby. Feel me, city of bright light. Brooklyn, you already know, guys. Right? much going on at LIU Arts, Performances, Sports. Did you know that the Real Sisters Film Festival is actually coming up on October 13th and 14th? Yes. And I you can ticket. get, really, with a student discount on the LIU website? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Well, I can't show it to you right now, but it's there. Um, let's check out a sports film, Heart and Hustle, from a documentary from Worldworks. Jerry Gomez profiles the intense relationship between a baseball coach and his players. And uh, hey, listen, man. let's do what we do. I'm hella proud of you guys. Let's Can go. Bring it in. Good job. You always call it. Good job. Good job. Yeah, Break it down. it go? Let's go. Let's go. James. James Terrence Seiko. I was born right here in Brooklyn at uh, Kings County Hospital, 1975. When I first started coaching, I only coached because my son wanted to play. I didn't have a whole lot of desire to teach anybody. I was very, very strict, very unbreakable, and I just felt this is how it's got to be done and this is how it's going to get done. But over the years, you know, having these boys and watching them grow and extending my family with these kids, I think they've changed me into more of a father figure slash coach because I feel like a father to a lot of my kids. You had it right, but as you come you here, take a step, pop, shot. James, outside of baseball, he's, he's actually, like, he can be your friend. He's, he's a good coach. He's the first coach I've ever had as a good coach. He teaches me things on how to be responsible, how to, how to work with other people, how to learn how to control, like, the outcome of life. Is he an angry guy? Yeah, he's an angry guy sometimes. I'm going to start doing what we're not supposed to do. He talks about responsibilities, life in general. I don't know, he reaches out to you, to you and like he really helps you out when you have when you have problems. Most of my youth I lived in Crown Heights. The only times that I really enjoyed myself was when I was outdoors. Because inside my house it just wasn't a lot of fun. My father was abusive and uh, then you couldn't look at him in the eye, you, you couldn't talk to him. What I do now is what, why I was able to escape to have fun. I was never inside my house. You know, one thing that I told my father years ago when we reconciled is, I'm very thankful because you've, you've shown me what I don't want to do. You know, I've always told my kids, and I'm full of sayings, and I'll tell you that. You know, if you see a stick on the floor and you trip over it, you don't want to continue to fall over the same stick. At some point, you pick it up and you learn how to walk around it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. go, through, go, through, go through. My name is Brandon Molina, and I've been playing with James for four, four years, I think. 
Uh, Brandon I've known for years, and I love Brandon like my own son. And it hurts me when I see this kid throwing away his future. I didn't go to school for about two weeks, and my mom called James. So he came to my house, picked me up, had a good talk, drove me to school. When he was taking you to school, what did he tell you about his childhood? How rough it is, and no matter how things, how rough things are for me, that you sh school is the main priority, no matter what. Come here, Brandon, look, Come Brandon. Let me get my going. I would hope I've helped him realize how to focus on what's important and what he should be putting more effort into now as he goes on and as he continues with his young adult life. Uh, my name is Jeffrey. I've been playing baseball, to say true, when I started with James uh, since last year. Let's go. Oh, Jeff, I see a lot of me, but not baseball-wise. I just see a lot of anger. And I see a kid that a lot of people gave up on, and I feel really bad for him. Go to, let's go, let's go. I was moved from my home at 12, and I didn't go back home until 14. I was just angry at everybody, even people that may not even heard of me or seen me. I blamed them for something. He's a good coach. Every coach has their own uh, way to coach. I'm still young. I'm 18. When I was last year, I was 17, so I struggled. I had some angle problems, strike three, calls maybe I wouldn't like. So... You know, he's a strong guy, so by him screaming at me and just shutting me up, it would, you know, it would give me a reason why I should stop in the, right there in the play and just think about twice before I scream out or get angry. I hope that I've helped him calm down. Stop going to his house and we've talked in front of his door. I always try and give him a hug when I see him to let him know, you know, no matter what, I love him. You know, no matter what he does out here, win, lose, or draw. Everything's a step process. I never expected for him to turn around in a day. So the real test will come down the line, you know. It's not a day type of deal. All right, listen up. The only thing that we need to be concerned with right now is the fact that this game needs to be taken care of. You can't change the world, you know. You can only change what you happen to come across. I gave it my best to change, bring in and change and hopefully I've done enough. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. You see something to hit, hit it. Drive it. Each and every one of you here has always been a champion to me. All right? We work very hard and we do what we need to do. But in the end, at this point, you boys need to play like champions. So let's go. Let's bring it in. All right, no excuses. No excuses. Play like you want it. Play like you mean it. All right, let's go. Get that line up. Clap it up. Let's go. The easiest part of the game is is to give a kid a hug. I. I'm a real emotional guy. You know, my growth as a man has actually been helped by a lot of these kids that I've, I've coached. Now when I come across situations that would trigger a lot of anger and rage before, I can handle it very, very well now. Again, I feel like a father to a lot of these kids. And once this group is not playing anymore, I will always be around and connected with them. But at that point, I really, really think I'd step away.
Say the sunset fog, Oh, no, you did not. Because you look at me so into it. <laughs> He's like, he asks me the most weirdest questions. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed those films. Don't forget to keep submitting your own. Thank you so much to LIU Brooklyn for letting us check out the campus. Until next time. Keep it cool. Keep it real. Keep, keep it, it BK, BK for real. real. You know, I really like the art exhibit. I like it too. Yeah. Uh, we need to come back. Some, yeah. Student sometime. discount, right? Yeah, of course. You have your ID? Oh, I do. Yeah. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.